Late in 1982, I, uh, we had the year of the public. Solid Rock had been a huge commercial success. We had the year of commercial radio, and I met Bob Brown. I'd been following the whole story that was unfolding down in Tasmania uh, with the campaign, well, with the, the damming, the proposal to dam the Franklin River and the campaign that opposed the damming of that river. And I'd seen um, Peter Dombrovskis' beautiful photographs, compelling photographs of that extraordinary and unique wilderness. Um, I'd also seen the photos of Olegis Trakanis of Lake Pedder, one of the great environmental follies of uh, the 20th century, where that lake, the goddess's bath, one of the one natural wonders of the world, really, was dammed for hydroelectricity. Um, in the scheme of geological time, how long does a dam last? You know, until the, the, the concrete crumbles. Not that long, really, in geological time. And I think a lot of people my age and older and people from Tasmania who loved the natural environment were motivated to not allow something as stupid as that to happen again when it came to the Franklin River. I met Bob Brown in Sydney and I, I said, I'd like to try and write a song. And he said, well, you gotta go down there. You gotta go down and see the place for yourself so you know what, what's at stake. And so I did and Bob was a great, helped me organize, get that together. And we went down to the Franklin early in 1983 and I saw for myself, I stood in the presence of three and 4,000 year old hewn pine trees. Um, you know that were big trees before Christ even was on the earth. Um, and I was deeply moved by all these young people who gave of their own time and their energy uh, at their own expense to be there. And you had to go to base camp and do your non-violent action training first before you went up river to know how to be arrested peacefully um, and passively. At the end of the day, uh, I returned. I wasn't allowed to get arrested because I had five days, after, uh, five days after we went down to the Franklin River, I had to be back in Melbourne for a major concert that Midnight Oil had convened called Stop the Drop, which was an anti-nuclear campaign. And uh, I had to write the song and get it finished in those five days. And we performed it at that Stop the Drop concert. It was recorded and filmed and that went out from there. Um, and Bob was very supportive all the way through, giving us footage and access to people. Um, to try and get that out. The, um, the songs don't necessarily change the world, I know. They, um, but art has a really important role to play in... We had the year of the public at the time. We were able to release that song and get it onto commercial radio and keep the, the story alive in the media when it was beginning to wane from the pages, the newspapers. And uh, Bob knew that too. He was shrewd enough, I'm sure. Um, why did the Franklin get saved? Bob Hawke made an election promise. He won government. Robin Gray, the Premier of Tasmania at the time, said, no way, uh, the state can do, has jurisdiction over its own territory. And uh, they took it to the High Court, of course, and the High Court resolved that the federal government has the capacity to intervene on um, over the to, to over the states on issues of national significance and the Franklin River was saved but had it not been for the agitation of all those young people down the rivers drawing attention drawing the media um, all those incredible photographers 
all those filmmakers, the painters, the writers, uh, the journalists, getting the story out. I don't know that it would have been saved. barbaric in those days and um, if they've changed at all and, um, there were cans and strewn all over the floor after everyone had left and there were guys going around with metal rakes raking them up but that was just the sophisticated way they did things in those days and this one fella came up to me um, everyone had gone and I was just hanging back with the road crew they were packing up the spoke came up for the rake and he said, I should wrap this around your effing head. And I said, what would you want to do that for? He said, oh, you and your greeny lefty mates. And he had a swing and I, I ducked and I didn't get that one. And unfortunately the crew came to my aid in the nick of time. And I was speared a rake through the head. But I felt for that guy afterwards when I reflected on that so often the big end of town gets to manipulate the little end of town and in many ways get them to do their bidding for them it was hard to know then how that was going to work out but the reality is that Storm which was a dying timber town in those days is now a thriving tourist town Let the Franklin fall, let the wild man speak. 
Burkina to the southwest shore. Thank you.